For this week's episode of Monkey Shorts, I actually want to uh, just cover off something that uh, I learned from one of my self-service business intelligence bootcamp attendees. Uh, in one of our Ask Me Anything sessions, one of the people asked, Ken, what's the minimum number of cells you can have for a table? And my response was two, one for the header row, one for the first row of data. And then one of my attendees, Matthias, said, that's not true. You can actually turn off the header row, so the minimum is one. I went, really? That's kind of interesting. I'd never actually done that. So let's take a look at this. I've got a little table here that I've pulled into Power Query, and I have a cell here. And the idea is that I'm going to try and use Power Query to figure out what my last sale date is for a vendor. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to turn this into a table. Now, I've got a single cell with nothing around it. It doesn't have headers, so I'm going to say OK and it automatically puts the header in. Well, if I go to my table design, I can turn off the header row to get back to a single cell, which I can now move over here. And I can change the format of it. I like green for my input cells, so I'm gonna change that to green. Now, what I'm gonna do with this, I'm gonna go right click on this, and I'm gonna to choose to get data. I'm gonna pull it into Power Query. And I'm gonna take this, and I'm just gonna rename it to Vendor. Now, I notice that it's promoted this to headers. I don't want that, so I'm going to delete a couple of steps here and then right-click and drill down to turn it into a scalar query. I'm now going to take my raw data. I'm going to reference it. There we go. And this one here is going to be, I'm just going to call this last sale. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter this. We're just going to filter it down to Husky and say OK. And then instead of using Husky, unfortunately, I can't choose that when I'm doing a filter. I wish I could. Uh, so I'm just going to go and type in vendor, the amount of my scalar query there. So it still does the same filter. At that point, I can now remove, well, actually, I should probably filter this one here to date filters uh, is latest. And then I can go right click, remove other columns, right click and drill down. And that now gives me the last sale date that I can say home close. There we go. Now I'm loading to connection only by default. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go change the load destination here to load this to a table. I'll just throw it right over here and say OK. Of course, it gives me the header, which I can turn off if I select the table, turn that off, and maybe change the table style to just light. There we go. So I now have something that I can look at and say, let's just change this to staples and go and hit data, refresh all, and I've got a different date. I could do it faster with formulas, yes. But does it give me flexibility for Power Query reporting? Yes, it does. And that's kind of the point here of what we're looking at. So there you go. One cell, one for one table. Thank you for watching this episode of Monkey Shorts. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to click on the Skillwave logo on the bottom left in order to subscribe to our channel. Or if you'd like to see more videos in the series, click on the playlist tile on the right. And if you'd like to get more comprehensive training, you should definitely check out our website at skillwave.training.